Start with rectangles of squares of fabric, add an interesting specialty fabric or trim, and then use straight stitching to create attractive, usable projects. Those are the criteria I used to develop this three-part Sewing with Nancy series. Let's begin with the Jewelry Caddy Duel, which fits all of the standards set for the show. The caddies use two sizes of fabric rectangles, clear vinyl, along with ribbon accents, and the sewing is done completely with straight stitching. Best of all, the projects are attractive and practical. So simple with rectangles and squares, that's what's next on Sewing with Nancy. Sewing with Nancy, TV's longest airing sewing and quilting program with Nancy Zeman is made possible by Baby Lock, a complete line of sewing, quilting, and embroidery machines and sergers. Baby Lock, for the love of sewing. Madeira, specializing in embroidery, quilting, and special effect threads because creativity is never black and white. Koala Studios, fine sewing furniture custom built in America. Clover, making a difference in sewing, quilting, crafting, and needle arts for over 30 years. Amazing designs and class A needles. Let's start by taking a close up look at the jewelry caddy, the duel that I have. I'm gonna show you how to make both of these. This one, of course, you can hang necklaces and the pocket below for earrings or, or a bracelet. And then the four pocket one is just obviously just with zippers. Same size, comparable techniques. And what I really like about this is the interesting closure, this ribbon loop closure that doesn't take a lot of work. So if you haven't sewn before, this is really a great project to start with. Straight stitching, squares of fabric. Now we're going to talk about the specialty fabric first, and that's the clear vinyl. You can buy that at a, at a regular fabric store, and it's sold with paper on it, and it's a good thing because sometimes you can't even see it when you're working with it. So here's the vinyl underneath, and I usually keep it wrapped in the paper that it comes with. And before using it, because if it's folded, it does get wrinkled, make sure your iron is set at its lowest temperature. You reduce the steam to nothing, and then press with the paper over it. Do not put your iron, for obvious reasons, on the clear vinyl. And if you've lost your paper, just cover it with fabric to get the wrinkles out before you do the cutting. Now, speaking of cutting, here are the sizes of the rectangles. and. We're going to work with canvas fabric or cotton fabric. I've chosen a canvas. And the outer size is 12 by 18. So I've cut two 12 by 18s in different fabrics or coordinating fabrics to make the, the sample step by steps. And then there are inner rectangles. Instead of it being 12 by 18, it's two inches smaller. So it's 10 by 16. And you see the vinyl and I've outlined the edges, making a little bit more visible where the vinyl is. I have another layer of fabric and then just to give it a little more substance, some polyester fleece. So we have three layers here, plus the larger 12 by 18. Now for the jewelry tote or, or caddy that has the necklace top, cut the clear vinyl three inches shorter so that you can we'll be putting some ties up here. So really not difficult, just some rectangles of fabric and truthfully, you can make this any size you'd like. For the four pocket jewelry caddy, you'll need zippers and these are nine inch zippers or you could use, if you have in your sewing area, zippers that are on the roll that have many, many tabs. I like to keep these at hand so that you zigzag with a bar tack at the end and at the top and then cut off the zipper the length that you'd like. Then find your next tab, pull the zipper tab down and cut another length. It's nice to have these at hand. We have found that when sewing the zippers on the vinyl, we're gonna do it the easiest way possible and that's just to top stitch the zippers in place. And if you look at the end in the beginning of the zipper, you'll see that we have a little fabric area or fabric tab in this area. It makes it easier to get the zipper tape out of the way of the seam. So to accomplish that, we've cut squares. Here comes the square part of the show. They're two and a half inches square. And you start at the underside of the zipper and you just wrap it around the zipper tape, right sides together. 
and after you've done the wrapping a little bit more clearly than I've shown you here, you stitch across the end. And then cut off any little extra if you'd like, but then you have a tab to work with. And it makes that zippered tab out of the way of the seam. And it looks kind of nice too. So you're going to make four zippers in this manner. If you want it for the necklace, you want a zipper in there, you can do that too. So that's how you create the zippers. Now for some marking. We're going to get the blue fabric up here and we're going to place the zippers directly on top of the clear vinyl. But to mark the clear vinyl, unless you're using a permanent marker, there's no way to mark it. So this is what we like to do. It's just fast. We're going to fold this in half, fold it in half again, and now I'm just going to go to my ironing surface and press, press in the press marks. And let me put away my clear vinyl and press. Press marking is something that we use a lot during this series, so just mark, put in those press marks. I'm going to place this fabric back on my original stack just to have a reference and place the clear vinyl over this. You can see the press marks perhaps through here or you could darken that on the fabric with a marking pen. And then on each zipper on the back I placed fourth of an inch wide double sided basting tape and you peel off the paper covering and center the zipper tape over the press mark and it pins it in place so you don't have to worry about the shifting. And then before doing the stitching, you're going to do all three sections that are marked and then a fourth one. A fourth zipper is going to be placed an inch and a half from the top so that you have four pockets. And then you're just going to separate again the clear vinyl and stitch. Now a Teflon foot is needed so that the foot does not get stuck on the clear vinyl. And you can see how easy it is to top stitch on either side of the zipper tape. If you didn't have a Teflon foot, use a piece of paper toweling, fold it in half. And here you can see that I'm placing it between the foot and the fabric, the clear fabric, the clear vinyl, and then I can stitch with ease. Not sewing through the paper toweling just as a buffer zone. You can't use the zippers as they are now because obviously the clear vinyl is on the underside. So on this sample, I'm going to work from the underside, slightly opening the zipper, but just use the tip of your scissors and make a slit down the middle. And then you could cut away, as I have on this one, it's maybe difficult to see, but about a half of an inch opening. Can, you don't see the glare there. And then you've top stitched that zipper into place. So now you can do some stitching of placing the layers that are all the same size together so that you're now going to stitch to make pockets. You stitch along the top edge of the zippers and you can see how that's done and presto you have that done. If you'd like to do a divider in the pockets on this finished pocket we have a divider. We've just stitched down on this three layers below the zipper tape and above the zipper tape so that I have two pockets within that section. Now if you're going to make the necklace divider, let me just show you how that works. It's, it's very simple. Oop. As I mentioned, you're going to cut that vinyl a little bit shorter. I placed one pocket in the lower edge and turned under the top pocket by an inch. And then top stitch some ribbon. Now you're not going to have this black mark. I'm just showing you that that's an inch turned under. This ribbon at the top is 10 inches. You're going to cut three sections that are 10 inches or so long, fold in half. I found the center and then just kind of eyeballed maybe or divided by force again so that you place the ribbon on either edge and you can baste it across the top. That's how you do it. Then after you have done this, it's time to add the ribbon to the back. And honestly, this took the most thought of this whole program. I didn't want to make it difficult for you. So here's how you do it. We'll see how we can describe this. So to make the ribbon across the back, you're going to need a yard of ribbon. And I measured, placed a mark on the fabric four inches from one end. 
and then I also pressed mark the fabric and I would press mark the fabric in half and in half again and, and press mark this and you start placing the ribbon at the middle at the middle press mark and on either side of it and you can start on the middle and then you stop at that marking stop at that four inch marking and if you're wondering where all these markings are you'll find them in the book that accompanies the program if you didn't get all the notes down you wrap it around and then you extend the ribbon three inches from the top and as you get to the middle that one yard of ribbon will fit right in here I turned under an edge and would zigzag. Now we can't zigzag the whole thing down so we've left an inch and a half free in this area and measured about two inches from the end so that we have this section complete. Now the binding, a foolproof binding way of putting all the layers together. Let me get my sections together here and you would place the middle section, center it so that you have one inch on either side. Working with the long ends, I'm going to fold once, fold twice, and top stitch all the way around the edge. It's a full binding. It's not a binding that's been added. And then on this small sample, you've seen the long edges stitched. Then miter the corner by folding in half so that you have a miter. With the tip of your iron, catch that fold. And then do the double fold. Fold once, fold twice, and at the corner, aha, you have a picture frame miter. Stitch all around the edges. And when you're finished, you have this caddy that holds your precious jewelry for travel. Using the same dimensions and many of the same fabrics as a jewelry caddy, make a portable mini ironing blanket. Use it next to your sewing machine for quick presses or create a larger blanket that easily transports. You can use it as a ironing board substitute or for travel. Once you know how to make this caddy, you can make the interior with the a quilted ironing board fabric, or if you didn't have the quilted, you can just purchase the replacement ironing board fabric and use two layers of polyester fleece for the smaller rectangular sizes. The outer rectangle is cut two inches longer, two inches wider, and to make something larger for travel or a replacement for an ironing board, it's very handy to place perhaps on the top of your washing machine or on a kitchen counter for some quick presses. One of the interesting things about these caddies is the way that they close, and it took a little bit to figure out how to measure and determine where it's placed. So you can make this closure on any size of rectangle that you'd like and I'd like to show you how. You'd cut the outer fabric two inches wider and longer and fold it in half and fold it in half again and press mark it. Then fold it in half meeting the lengthwise edges. So you have these press marks a long mark and then the quarter marks and I've darkened them the center mark and the quarter marks. To have that little loop from one of the quarter marks you're going to measure an inch and a half and that will be the extension of the loop. And we do some stitching, skewer it down at the quarter mark. Then to have the extension of the loop measure three inches beyond the opposite end. And I said, regardless of the size that you're working with, whether it's small or large, you can use these same measurements. Quarter mark, add a half of an inch. You can extend it by three inches if it's smaller or larger. So on this piece, I have the fabric quarter marked, and I have that inch and a half extension. And on the opposite end, I've extended the ribbon three inches. And I stitch, would stitch it down, leaving a little extension at the end and that inch and a half at the opposite end. So big or small, quilted or for a jewelry roll up, you can add this extension, stitch it down, then roll it up and use it for travel or storage in your house. It's easy to do and great with that specialty fabric. 
How about adding extra storage to your home without assembling knockdown furniture or remodeling a closet? Create portable, compact closet organizers with double-sided quilted fabric, clear vinyl, and ribbon trim. It's another straight stitching technique that can hang in full view or behind a closet door. When you take a look at the organizer, you'll see the double-sided fabric, the grommets at the top, and then the clear vinyl pockets with ribbon trim just to make those edges secure. Simple st stitching again, and we're cutting the quilted fabric for 45 by 15, so it's 15 inches wide, and I'm going to work with it on the crosswise of my table. Press under four inches at the top. So I'm gonna set my gauge at four inches. You'd finger press and pin four inches from the top and stitch down this edge. All the remainder edges are going to be pressed under one inch and top stitched. Don't spend a lot of time on this. This is the back of the fabric. It's going to face the closet door. So just get it nicely stitched as this sample has been. So here's the header with the four inches that has been turned under on the top. And now get out your tape measure and remember your timetables from third grade about with working with the number seven because I'm going to place my tape measure at the stitching which I have darkened at the four inches from the top and from that measurement mark at seven inches, 14, 21, 28, and you got it 35. And do the same marking on the opposite side. 7, 14, 21, 28, and 35. And then you can see that I have markings across the area, just connecting those dots. That's going to be the stitching line for the pockets. So the backing is pretty much set. Then for the vinyl, same width, 15 inches, and this time the length is going to be 50. 15 by 50. And it's been pre-cut and we've highlighted the ends. Now you don't have to highlight the edges as I've done. Just, this is just done so you can see a little bit better. It's kind of hard to see, actually. And then to s attach the ribbon, all you do is press under one inch and then cover the edge with ribbon and stitch. And here's a close-up of, again, using that Teflon foot and stitching along both sides of the ribbon so that you finish both long edges of the vinyl. Now you knew your multiples of seven, now we're going to go to multitudes, multiples of 10. And our size of the vinyl is 10, I should say, no, excuse me, it's 15 by 50, 15 by 50. You've got a lot of measurements, but it makes it easy if you divide things out. And to do this, I have pins. This time it's 10 inches, every 10 inches I have a pin, 10, 20, 30, 40, and then the end is 50. And then the opposite end, I have the same pins. Ten, at the edge, 10, 20, 30, 40, and the end is 50. I think you're, you're kind of knowing where I'm going with this. So we're going to meet the pockets, the, seven inches to, the 10 inches to the 7 inches. So I'm going to clip, and the clips work so well because it's hard to pin through vinyl. So we're going to just clip this into place, and you do this along each pocket section. And I'm just going to now do it for you on the opposite end. Get my clips and clip marking those, the 10 inches to meet the 7 inches. And you can see the stitching line through the vinyl. And after you get them all clipped in, into place, then you're going to do some stitching. As you can see, I'm stitching right down the middle, following that line, that seven inch line that I've marked. Now to complete this, to hang it, you need some grommets. Earlier in this program, we worked with grommets and I always like to make a sample grommet before placing it into my project. So you're going to have the template that was used in the packaging and mark it on your fabric cut out the circle shapes, place a grommet on the back and one on the front. Work on the hard surface. I'm using my pressing tool and then pound it down. You can always pop these out for practice and there you have your grommet in place. Hang it up behind your closet door and you have storage.
Most of us have cuddly comforters on our beds, but what about our four-legged friends? Laura Nigberg is here via Skype to encourage us to make cage comforters for dogs and cats that are currently living in animal shelters. Laura, welcome to Sewing with Nancy. Thank you so much for having me. The Milwaukee Area Domestic Animal Control, Control Commission has a great program about the cage comforters, and tell us about that program. Absolutely. So while we hope that the pets that come in here have a very short stay with us, we do want that stay to be as comfortable and as welcoming for them as possible. So what we do is we ask individuals to use their talents to make cage comforters. And so it's for the cats, for the dogs, goes in the cat condos and the dog kennels, gives them a little extra warmth in those winter months, but also gives them that extra padding for a nice, comfortable rest. Just like you mentioned, uh, we have our comforters. It allows them to have some of that as well. And you've encouraged people in your area to make the cage comforters. And uh, I, when we were talking about this earlier, you, it can be a beginner sewer, you can use remnants. Tell about some of the specifications. Absolutely. So we're looking for two specifications, one for the dogs, one for the cats. The cats is a 10 by 15 with three and a half inch thickness. And the dogs is 24 by 34. Again, also with more like a three and a half inch thickness, just to give them a little extra padding uh, for them to be more comfortable. But again, it can be beginner sewers. Lots of the volunteers will use remnants. It doesn't, mm -hmm. the threads don't match. The animals don't care um, how, sure. or how good it looks. They <laughs> just want it to be comfortable. You do have one suggestion though, but the fabric shouldn't have a loop or something where their nails could get caught. So. Absolutely. Yep. So it shouldn't be Chanel or mm -hmm. um, any of the burlap. Now the thickness is very important because we may not have our comforters that thick. So you make sure that they're thick so you don't have to put two together. Correct. That's help, very helpful for us. Now, even though you're at the Milwaukee Area Domestic Animal Control Center, you don't want everyone to send your comfort cage comforters to you. You have some suggestions for someone, let's say, living in Kentucky or Arizona. Absolutely. So, well, we love that our volunteers locally uh, send us our comforters. Shelters across America are looking for cage comforters as well. And I encourage you to look on the website or call your local shelter mm -hmm. and see what they need. Um, their sizes are probably a bit different than ours, so it's good to call ahead first. Yes, because we, you mentioned that there are 20 different universal sizes of cages or condos for the animals. So making them 10 by 15 or 24 by 24 may not fit your your local area. Correct, yep. Now you have how many animals a year that you service? We take in about 13,000 animals out of Milwaukee County, the largest uh, animal control facility in, in Wisconsin. And then if they are moved to a different center than this, like a comfy blanket like a little kid has, their comforter goes with them. Yeah, it's like their little blankie um, <laughs> because uh, especially with the cats, when the scent, when they've already had their particular scent sure. on one of the comforters, um, it's more comforting for them if they can have something with their scent already on it. And then when they go to their permanent home, it's a, another comfort blanket to follow them the, through their life. Absolutely. So you have 13,000 animals that you work with and then you like about 1,000 comforters a year. Yes. So that's a lot. Yeah. They go through a lot of wear and tear. And as much as we try to save them and we have volunteers who will fix um, uh, them after sure. they've been used a lot, um, we do have to replace them often. Mm -hmm. Well, I think this is a, a great project. Even if you're teaching a young person to sew or working with someone who hasn't sewn before, this would be a perfect project because the animal will enjoy the comfort. but things don't have to match. <laughs> exactly. Well, Laura, I thank you for joining us and this great program of cage comforters, easy project. I think lo those of us who have animals at home, my dog Lucas came from a shelter, I'd gladly make them. I'm sure many of our viewers will too. Thank you for joining us. Thank you for having me. You're welcome, Laura. 
If you'd like more information on the cage comforters, you can go to All Things Sewing with Nancy, which is at our website, nancyzeman.com. You can watch the latest of shows, about 70 shows are online. You can rewatch this program if you'd like, and then click on Nancy's Corner to find more information about the cage comforters. Well, this wraps up our three-part series on so simple rectangles and squares. I've had a lot of fun working with these projects, and I hope that you will pick one or two and make a so simple project to decorate your home or your office. Thanks for joining us. Bye for now. Nancy has written a fully illustrated book entitled So Simple with Rectangles and Squares that includes all the information from this three-part series. It's $14.99 plus shipping and handling. To order the book, call 800-336-8373 or visit our website at sewingwithnancy.com slash 2801. Order item number BK2801, So Simple with Rectangles and Squares. To pay by check or money order, call the number on the screen for details. Visit Nancy's website at nancyseaman.com to see additional episodes, Nancy's blog, and more. Sewing with Nancy, TV's longest airing sewing and quilting program with Nancy Zeman has been brought to you by Baby Lock, Madeira Threads, Koala Studios, Clover, Amazing Designs and Class A Needles, Closed Captioning Funding provided by Pellon. Sewing with Nancy is a co-production of Nancy Zeman Productions and Wisconsin Public Television.